Now back to Smoke on the Water for more Straight Up with Sturge. All right, welcome back in. Hour number two on this Thursday night edition of Straight Up with Sturge, live on Talk Sports 104.9 FM. And to the guest line we go, we bring in Will Proctor all the way from New York City. How are things up there in the big city, Will? Things are good. Things are good. Obviously, uh, it could be better uh, had we had a better result Saturday night, but we're getting through the week, and some uh, cool weather has uh, rolled in the city, uh-huh. so uh, kind of breaking into fall here. Yeah, I, I think we went straight by. I can't, I'm not even going to complain because you're in New York City. I think here in the upstate, we went from summer to winter uh, this week because it got cold last night down here in South Carolina, Will. But, you know, you were in the stadium on Saturday. You uh you were with us on the pregame show uh, on Saturday from Friars Tavern, which, by the way, real quickly, the Tiger pregame show from 930 to 1230 this Saturday right here at Smoke on the Water, just to let you know. But, uh, Will, what did you see take place Saturday? I mean, what did you see transpire as a former quarterback that knows the X's and O's of the game, knows the check, the check, you know, the chess game that goes on between coaching staffs, what did you see transpire as a former quarterback, which caused Clemson to get completely off kilter Saturday night? Yeah, and you know, you bring up a chess game. Unfortunately, I don't know how much of a chess game played out, uh, but it just seemed like you know we really just got beaten all three phases of the game. Uh, we didn't play particularly well on offense, which is something that's kind of plagued us the last couple of weeks. And you know, a lot of people, including myself, have kind of made some convenient excuses. For our offense, you know, we, we've obviously got a, a ton of talent, but, you know, Boston College, everyone said, oh, well, they're looking ahead, you know, to Florida State potentially, and then, you know, we go out and don't have that great of a performance on Saturday night, but it, it's not one person's fault. It's collectively, and Florida State did a bunch of things defensively to to shut us down, but, you know, I thought, you know, to start the game, I thought, you know, if I were to guess what kind of play we'd run on the first possession, I just thought, hey, we'll probably run the ball let everybody – you know, get get situated, get a pop, and, and take a hit a little bit. But we came out throwing, which I thought was great, aggressive, let's put it to him. And, you know, obviously we all know about the fumble, and it was so close to his knee being down that they had to take it to a, a review. But, you know, we're a breakaway right there just from being, you know, oh, man, you got away with it, you fumbled, but your knee was down, to just horror the other way and seven quick points from them. And it really felt like, you know, we were – it felt like we were out of it from, you know, the – second possession of the game which was just so mm-hmm. bizarre so you know i don't yeah, know it's, it's a t- tough one you know I, you know, I think it came down, quite frankly, I've tried to be as transparent as possible this week. You know, there are no excuses coming from my end. Every once in a while when you get beat, you just tip your cap to the opponent and go, you were better than us. And I think that was the case Saturday night. And I thought it started up front because they were able to get pressure on Taj Boyd and make him not be able to set his feet while Winston had a lot of time at times against a, a, a team in Clemson that's been able to put pressure on every quarterback. Yeah, you're right. Did I mean, you feel definitely. like that was the case? Because you played, in my opinion, with some of the nastiest offensive linemen that Clemson's had in the last 15 years. And I, I didn't feel like I saw that Saturday night out of Clemson's offensive line. Well, yeah. I mean, Taj really didn't ever have a chance to set his feet. Uh, he was kind of, you know, having to move around a lot in the pocket, having to throw off his back foot quite a bit, a little, you know, some of the stuff where he's doing the sidearm stuff to get around the guy potentially. But you're right. I mean, it seemed like Jameis Winston had, uh, you know, so much time back there to throw and finding guys just wide open in these big zones that were uh, behind our our front seven. But, you know, again, like if if it's up front, it is what it is. But we never really gave our defense a chance just based on the field position Mm -hmm. we were putting them in, which never gave our crowd a chance to kind of show their teeth. And um, we all knew how how important the crowd was going to be. And you know, and to their credit, I mean, even after that first turnover, I was down on the field for that first drive on Florida State. I mean, they cranked it up, and it got very loud. And then, of course, it did. a few plays go by. A few, oh, gosh. they And I was with a buddy down there that had never been, and you could it was like levels. They were turning it up and turning it up and turning it up, and it really got loud to their credit. And, you know, then they have a great catch for a touchdown, and it's just so deflating. And, you know, yep. just never really felt like we were in it. Even when it was 17-7, just felt like it was 30 to nothing. I don't know what it was. Now, take our listeners back. I mean, they're frustrated. They're walking out. They put in a full day in at Clemson. 
but take them inside the locker room as a quarterback, Will. Your senior year, you're the starting quarterback. What's it? Try to explain to people what it's like in that locker room after the first loss of the season because I could sit here and tell it for days, and I don't think people would get it, but they'd understand it coming from somebody that put blood, sweat, and tears into this Clemson football program. Well, you know, I think it's real easy, especially from a fan's perspective, to go, oh, God, here we go. You know, it's uh, you know, a national title. This is the year, and it's over. And, you know, what are we going to do and all that kind of thing. But from a player's perspective, you know, like you mentioned, you tip your cap. You know, a lot of our guys know their guys. We're all kind of recruited to the same places and met these guys at camps. And, you know, you just kind of, like you said, tip your hat. But, but as a player – you know, us fans now, we sit here and talk about it on, on here we are Thursday night and we're still talking yep. about it. Well, you know, they've been preparing for Maryland for four days, and the reality of it is if they're still talking about it, if our team and our coaches are still talking about Florida State, then we're not doing a very good job of getting ready for Maryland. And that's the reality of it is, you know, while it may seem bleak now, we're still a top ten team in this country. Yeah. We're still a one-loss ball club with so much on the table left for us to accomplish and when you look at the schedule and you look at the eight teams in front of us, a couple of those teams have to play each other. So we're going to move. If, now, we've got to take care of business, and it starts one game at a time, and our guys are taking that attitude. But the reality of it is we'll move up by virtue of the schedule as long as we That's right. just continue to take care of business. And we have a BCS bowl with our name on it. And if things get really crazy, we can move up farther than I think people realize. Yeah, and uh, that's a, there's still a lot to play for. I did a segment out of Columbia yesterday. I went, they're like, what does Clemson still have to play for? I went, BCS game, because they went out. They don't want to go back to Atlanta for the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Oh. We're talking with Will Proctor, former Clemson quarterback, uh, played with uh, played at Clemson from 2003 to 2006. And, Will, uh, not only were you a quarterback, when I was doing my research, you were a wide receiver your freshman year. You got on the field as a wide receiver. Yeah, I did. Uh, we had uh, yeah. Harry Curry, if you remember him. He got hurt one week, yeah. and Kelvin Grant had to sit out a game for, for whatever reason, and uh, and Kevin Youngblood was banged up. So uh, we had some depth issues at wide receiver about halfway through the year. We were playing uh, Virginia, and, you know, I, just rose, I raised my hand and said, you know, hey, I, I know the plays. I'll do. I'm pretty fast. Put me in if you need me. So that was kind of how that shook out. And, Got on the field as a quarterback, a receiver, and on special teams that year, and um, it was a it was a fun way to uh, just to get some um, some plays under my belt. Now looking ahead to Maryland, it's been tough on the coaching staff because of those of us in the media that keep bringing up last Saturday night's game. Now, will being around the players on Monday and Tuesday, I think they really truly wish they could have laced it up and gone last night. Uh, they they were wanting that attitude, and I think. Uh, Saturday sets up well for Clemson if they have any manhood about them. Because I don't know if you've seen today Maryland's injury report. It it is a laundry list, 17 deep. uh, So what are you expecting out of Clemson on Saturday? Because if you're going to get well this week, Maryland's uh, health status allows you to do so if you go up there and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you know, I think that's going to be, um, you know, our performance on Saturday I think will reflect our leadership. And I think that, you know, we're fortunate to have such a great leader in Dabo Sweeney that is going to have these guys keyed up and ready to go and get the winning taste back in their mouth. And then you got to look to our, you know, our, our players and the, the leaders we have on offense and Taj and Sammy and Rod McDowell and the guys on defense and Vic Beasley. I mean, these guys are going to have to step up throughout the week and say, you know, we need to forget Florida State. You know, obviously that's a bad thing, but the only way we're going to get over it and the only way we're going to get uh, things pointed in the right direction is to go up to Maryland with a swagger about yourself, knock them in the mouth, and come home with a win. And now we keep we keep the train rolling from there. Yeah, and, and listen, you know, it starts with Saturday because if you don't go up there and have attention to detail, and, and, and again, I think, I think your manhood got challenged last week, and now you got to respond this week. And, you know, as that senior quarterback, as that leader, what would your message be to your football team this week? You know, I think you, I think you have to, you know, show them that you're focused, show them that you're concentrating on this week's game, show them that you're not, you know, still thinking about Florida State. You know, when you're in practice, not going, hey, man, remember that play uh, – 
you know, I, I, I missed that throw or you missed that catch, just to literally not talk about it and then just show your teammates by example, you know, your focus, you know, maybe if you're the quarterback, you're staying after practice to, you know, hey, Sammy, you know, let's work on that, you know, fade route, you know, down in the red zone that we, you know, we've had some success with this year, whatever the case may be, but really show, I mean, I was always the type of guy that, you know, rah-rah leaders can only take you so far at a certain point. You've got to show it uh, with your with your actions. And I think Todd has done a great job of that uh, as long as I've known him. Um, going back to, you know, several years ago, he's a great lead-by-example type of guy, and I think he's done that this week from what I understand. Now, Will, you were just talking about rah-rah. One of my favorite sayings is from a good friend of mine, Adrian Branch with ESPN. He said one day, he goes, Sturgy, rah-rah pregame motivational speeches are for suckers. And by that he meant you play like you practice during the week, and it's not going to be a coach's speech right before kickoff that gets you in the proper frame of mind. But, uh, you know, you have to take that attitude out there as the quarterback and because you see different things. Now, I'm going to ask you, when you played quarterback, did, did in particular games, did you ever use anything for motivation? I'm going to throw this one out there. It just came out, C.J. Brown is out at quarterback this Saturday for Maryland. So it's going to be Caleb Rowe, a sophomore from right up the road here at Blue Ridge High School that wasn't recruited by Clemson. Would you have played him anyway in this final game against the Tigers to see if he couldn't go out there with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder that final time against Clemson because he wasn't recruited by Clemson, or is all that stuff null and void? I think it's probably null and void. I mean, they're going to put the best player on the field that they that, you know that they feel gives them the best chance to win. Um, but in terms of you know, you know, like going into my senior year, obviously it's a one game at a time mentality. You hear that all the time. But, you know, I did circle a game or two on our schedule my senior year saying, you know, these are these are a couple that I really want. Now, I understand, you know, if I, we want to have the year that we want to have, we've got to do some, you know, take care of business prior to those games, certainly thereafter. But, you know, I really, for whatever reason, my senior year, we had lost to Wake Forest at Wake Forest twice during my career. And I thought about that all offseason saying, well, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not losing at Wake. I, we just can't do it. Um, it's not going <laughs> to happen. And, you know, I had that Florida State game uh, circled on my schedule, just being from Florida. You know, those are things where they were added motivation, but it's not, again, rah-rah. It's, hey, I want to be extra focused, and, you know, we, we better really pay attention to detail all week and apply that uh, attention to detail throughout the game on Saturday. Yeah. How big of a high five did you give it Gaines Adams there at the beginning of the fourth quarter at BB&T Field? The, no, I believe that was, was your was senior year. <laughs> it was unbelievable, and I remember – I remember we had had a tough game. I had a, uh, a ball tipped at the line that was intercepted. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I had a ball go off C.J. Spiller's hands that was intercepted that was a little high. And so, I, you know, we, we had kind of sputtered offensively. And I remember going up to Coach Bowden and going, give me the ball. And the next, you know, next series, we on a third down, I hit Aaron Kelly, who made a great catch, and made a great route mm-hmm. on a post route, and uh, gave us another score. And then, obviously, uh, Gaines had made his play prior to that, and then C.J. Stiller had an 80-yard touchdown run after a touchback. So, you know, it was, uh, all of a sudden it looked pretty good for us there pretty quickly in the fourth quarter of that game. All right, before we go out and pay attention in the next segment, if you want to, Will, I've got Tim Strachan, the color analyst for the uh, Maryland Football Radio Network, to try to explain these 24 injuries on Maryland's injury report right now. I just took the time and counted up 24 names on Maryland's injury report. For Saturday's yeah. game, but uh, tell people what you're up to up in New York City, and you know I, I don't. At least you can't smack me from up there. And the fact that you completely outkicked your punk coverage when it comes to marriage and everything going on in the life of Will Proctor. Yeah, yeah, everything's good. You know, it's um, it's a fun time to be in New York City. Um, you know, I'm in my late twenties for another seven days or so, or ten days. Oh, happy birthday! Um, uh, coming up, yeah, but it's um, it's a it's a blast um, to be uh, you know a year into marriage, and I did marry a Gamecock, but I, I encourage um, Clemson fans, you'd probably do the same thing if you saw her. Um, she's uh, she's outstanding and beautiful, and and uh, has been a, a big supporter of me and, and my uh, my past at Clemson, so she's awesome. But um, you know, I'm up here on Wall Street uh, with an investment management firm, and. Uh, it's going great. I'm with a 75-year-old company that's done a lot of good things over a lot of years. So it's uh, it's been fun, and uh, I love getting down to, to the upstate and getting to a game or two 
or three or four, just depending on the year. I'm trying to get to a bunch this year. So it's uh, it's been fun. I enjoy uh, my time with you, Mark, and Scott. It's, uh, it's been a blast. Well, thank you. We're going to do this more frequently as your schedule allows. And, uh, again, thanks for all your hard work on Saturday. Uh, the fact that, listen, after not being distracted at Friars Tavern for the pregame show, then I realized, you know, that's probably like looking at a 6'5", 250 linebacker blitzing at you, and you didn't blink on Saturday. Congratulations for a great job. I'll tell you what, Friars, that got pretty wild there at the end. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 will, I, I want to leave you with this, and I, I really hope, uh, Clemson fans kind of direct their frustration with Saturday's loss toward beating Maryland and then going right. on to beating some of these other teams in our schedule because we've got five beatable games. And I'll tell you what, things are going to happen in front of us uh, in terms of we got the teams ranked ahead of us, and we're going to move up, and uh, we're going to have a great game uh, come, Janu- come at post-January 1, I'll guarantee you. Yep, and you, they can follow you on Twitter at Will underscore Proctor. That's correct. All right, Will, have a great weekend. Pull the Tigers through, and we look forward to talking to you soon. All right, Mark, thanks a lot. Go Tigers. All right. Former Clemson quarterback Will Proctor there. I enjoy getting that insight because, you know, I I, I was down on the field Saturday night. I saw what I saw. I was working for CBS Sports Radio, but it's always good to get that insight from somebody else. All right, Tim Strachan coming up on the other side, Maryland's color analyst here on Straight Up with Sturge on Talk Sports 104.9 FM, the flagship station of Clemson Athletics.